All right. Announcements are out of the way. And we're going to get into God's word. Week 18, believe it or not, the acts of the Holy Spirit. I titled this sermon, Toe to Toe with Satan. That's a pretty bold statement. It's a pretty bold title, but Acts is where Christianity began. I don't know if you you understand that, but Acts is where Christianity began. And in the book of Acts, the title Christians, they were called Christians first in the book of Acts. And I just want to pull, pull up that scripture, Acts 11, 26. The disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And you'll see if you study the book of Acts that Antioch is like this uh, missional field where Christians and missionaries get sent out. And where Paul, he does his missionary journeys and he takes uh, people and individuals and sends people to the different parts of the Roman Empire. And so Antioch is that center. And, And in the book of Acts, everything in the prophets and the gospels had led to this. The book of Acts. The death and resurrection of Christ and the birth of what we now know as Christianity. And in three short statements, here's how Acts can be described. I just kind of put this together. If we could pull that up, Paul. It's the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to all people. Remember, your sons, your daughters, your old men and women, right? Available to all nationalities. It's nothing but supernatural, the book of Acts. And I like this. It's God flexing his muscles through human disciples. Right? You need to hear that. Through human disciples. I'm a disciple of Jesus. I hope you are. Showing that God cannot be stopped. Jesus rose from the dead and went into heaven. He breathed the Holy Spirit, the outpouring and all that stuff. And the disciples were the human agents declaring God cannot be stopped. And I want to get you into the sermon today, all right? And so I want you to actually say this out loud as a proclamation and praise to the Lord, if you would. We'll pull this up. My God cannot be stopped. Let's proclaim that out loud. My God be Amen. My God cannot be stopped. Guess what? My Jesus cannot be stopped. Let's proclaim that. My Jesus cannot be stopped. Because we got to start speaking this stuff out into the atmosphere. When Satan starts attacking us and moving in on my space, Listen, I got God living inside of me. And that's the next bold statement I want us to proclaim this morning. The Holy Spirit is alive in my life. And I hope that's the case for you. Let's proclaim that out loud. The Holy Spirit is alive in my life. Amen. Amen. Now you're awake. If you were asleep, that's good for an opening warm up there. Just very quickly, I want to put, if you've missed any of this Acts series, I just want to point out a few things of our ABC connections, and then we're going to pray. There's our YouTube channel. Subscribe to that. The sermons are on there. Um, We also have our, the next one, that's our website. You can listen to sermons on there. You can find out and navigate some different things. And we also have our church app. And I did a screenshot of the church app as well to show you what's available You got the sermon notes and devotions, lots of sermon notes and devotions, good stuff in that app this week. You want to pay attention to that, as well as you can look down through there, lots of different things that that app offers. It offers you a Bible. If you like listening to the Bible and going to sleep or putting your earbuds at lunchtime, that you just got to, you know, you can use the ABC app to do that and you don't even necessarily need another app. So that's available to you. Check it out. Uh, With that, let's pray as we move God's word forward. Jesus, we want to be moved. And Lord, we want to be motivated by your Holy Spirit. We want to be renewed. We want to be changed more into your image, more into your likeness. 
Lord, we acknowledge that we can't do this by ourselves. We need you, the living God. So Lord, we invite the living God here right now into your story, Lord, into the good news. And let our hearts and minds be changed. In Jesus' name. Here's the truth. If you take the Holy Spirit out of the Bible, past the Gospels, there literally would be no more New Testament text outside of the Gospels. If you take the Holy Spirit away after the Gospel accounts, there is no rest of the Bible. I don't know if you realize that or not. There's no rest of the Bible. If you take that one, if you take part of God, which is the Holy Spirit, away from this great big picture, there's no more Bible besides Jesus' words in the gospel. That's how powerful this book is. The Holy Spirit is the wind behind the sail. I want to show you this picture. The Holy Spirit is the wind behind the sail. The Spirit literally, literally means wind. That word spirit or ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, literally means pneuma, it means wind. It's where we get the word pneumatics. Anybody heard of that word? If you've been around a shop, you've heard the word pneumatics. It's the powerful force in air that can move anything that engineers design it to do. It's that powerful. It's where we get that word. It's where if we stretch back into the Old Testament in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, where it says that God breathes, God breathes into humanity, his spirit, and they had breath, and we live now. It's, it's, it's too hard of a Hebrew word to pronounce, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to spare you of that. But it's a remarkable thing because we know that we are part of God's breath breathing into us. God's breath, we're the only part of creation that gets God's breath into us. It's the wind behind the sail. Think about this, wind cannot be stopped. We think of the damaging and devastating forces of a hurricane. And unfortunately, we've seen this in the United States on the oceanic fronts, Right, We see these devastating hurricanes. Wind can't be stopped. It's a force of nature. It's a powerful force. We were, last year, my father and my son, there's this place called Yankee Reef in this redneck part of town way up north of Port Austin, Michigan, where you remember, uh, what was it, about a year ago that we shot down some spy planes or something? So, anyways, this reef is 30 miles out in Lake Huron. So guess who wants to go there and fish? Me. And guess who picked a good day to go? Me. And I brought my dad along, my poor dad. So here's the scoop. So we set out, we set our sail. It's not a sailboat. Anyways, we set out, and it was I mean, it was like, you know, you know, like glass water, like a, a few little waves. I mean, it's just beautiful glass water. So we're like about five, six miles out. Then we get about eight and ten miles out, and then some chop starts to come on, right? We get about 15 miles out in Lake Huron. Now here comes some wind, and here comes some waves, And on shore, mind you, if you were to radio to somebody like, hey, we got six footers out here, they would have thought you were crazy, right? But that wind kept coming because let me tell you something, you got to respect the weather, you got to respect the waves, you got to respect the wind. And you know what we had to do because of the wind and the force that day? We had to turn around and crawl in and get a bath because the water came swamping over the boat because by the time we turned around, we were in six to 10-foot waves. 
It's kind of fun, actually, but <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't so fun for my poor dad. We handed him a raincoat, but that just, it wasn't good enough. It just saturated. And so we've only been out there one other time <laughs> because you can't get out. The wind, you have to, you can't, the wind is a, if you're a boater, you understand the wind. Like, you know, you have to respect it. It can't be stopped. I want to remind you of some scripture where Jesus, we read this this morning, if we could pull this up on the PowerPoint, Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Spirit. And then we've already covered this in Acts chapter 2, suddenly the sound, like the blowing of a violent wind came, like, listen, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind. You get the drift? Like the bowling of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, with the pneuma, with the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is why Paul says in Romans 8, 9 through 11, live, live by the Spirit. The Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. So he says, live by the Spirit. Not just part of the time, not just some of the time. Like, live your life in the Spirit of the living God. So you must understand this. The supernatural power, the pneuma, comes from within. So, I know I got a lot of PowerPoints here. It's the supernatural power of the Spirit that empowers us. Hear this. To go toe to toe with Satan. Because Brad Stamphus would be literally crushed. Right? We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Your family, your teenagers, your children wrestle not against flesh and blood. Your marriages wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities and dark forces, we stand no chance against that. But the living God does, and that living God lives inside of us. And we need to understand that, that we need to be people of the Spirit. Because let's be real, Satan and his demons are attacking you and your families. Is that a fair statement? They're attacking you and your families. And, and not just attacking, but punching. And some lethal blows, some, some real difficult things that we face. And I think the question we must ask ourselves as Christians is this. Are you going to let Satan use you or your family as a punching bag? You say, well, that's not my choice. I get it. We can't control attacks, but we can control how we fight back. Right? That kind of rhymes. Like we can't control the attacks, but we can control how we fight back. Huh? Come on. A little bit of rhyme to that. And so we must fight back. And you know, that's not what a lot of Christian churches out there, I'm not pointing out any particular Christian church, that's not talked about a lot, right? right? How we fight back. Like, what are you talking about? Fight back? Like, fight back, we got Jesus. Yeah, but listen, there's a difference. We got Jesus, but listen, Jesus lives in us. Jesus lives in us. It's more than just Jesus, no, I got the power of the Holy Ghost in my life. And so you better believe I'm going to fight back by the Holy Spirit. But we need to know how to fight back. So turn with me in your Bibles, or we'll have some of these verses, all of them actually, on the PowerPoint, to, to Acts chapter 13. We're going to look at verses 1 through 3.
in the church at Antioch. It says, verse 1 of Acts 13, in the church of Antioch there was prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon called Nick, Niger, Lucius and Cyrene and Manian and just a lot of hard names, so just skip over that part. <laughs> just, you know, Lucius, I don't know anybody named that anymore, so, you know. And Saul. And listen to this. And this is what we did during praise and worship this morning. Verse 2. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting. When's the last time outside of the church context that you worshiped the Lord and fasted? Ooh, that's a toughie. That's a toughie. But do you know where breakthrough comes? You want to know where serious breakthrough comes in your life? Through praise and worship and through prayer and fasting. Remember when the disciples, when this guy approached, it's in Matthew actually chapter, uh, well Mark chapter 9, 29, it's also in Matthew, where they, this demon possessed boy, and they brought him to Jesus and said, hey listen, we took, we took this, my son to your, to, to, to your disciples, but they could not cast this demonic out of him. You know what Jesus said to them? He said, ah, he goes, this type require prayer and what? Fasting. That's what the gospel says. In other words, there's a deeper level that we can go as Christians. And nobody in America, because of pizza, wants to talk about fasting. <laughs> fasting. Whoa, what's that mean? It means we might have to abstain from food or something. You want to go a little bit deeper now with all, I, I, there's some stuff in the app that you need to read about prayer and fasting because I don't, we're not going to talk about that this morning, uh, uh, deeper about fasting, but they were worshiping and guess what happened? They were fasting and guess what happened? This is so important. You want breakthrough in your, in your family, in your marriages, whatever you're seeking breakthrough for, worshiping the Lord and fasting and prayer, that's how it comes. Because guess what happens next? The Holy Spirit said. So while they're praying and while they're fasting and worshiping the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Holy Spirit shows up and speaks to them because that's often not talked about, that the Holy Spirit speaks to us. And besides just this verse, if you don't believe that, read John chapter 14, read 15, and read 16. Them are Jesus' words about the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit said what? He said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul, that's actually Paul, for the work of to which I have called them. So after, listen to what happened. After they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. So first came, before this great breakthrough that you're going to see this morning, came prayer, came fasting, which means we're going a little deeper. We're going a little deeper, right? You know, like in terms of fasting and in terms of abstaining, like we're going for that second piece of apple pie. It's like, like all silent. People are just like, whatever. We're going deeper. We're going deeper with the Lord, right? A little bit deeper. More than I lay me down to sleep, we're going deeper. For the, we're, we're praising, worshiping, and we're fasting. We're abstaining because why? Because we want to hear from the Lord. We need a breakthrough. We need a breakthrough. You want a breakthrough? Get with the Lord, and the Holy Spirit will speak and tell you what you ought to do. Prayer and fasting brings breakthrough. Verses four through eight says this. The two of them, that would be Paul and Barnabas, after they laid their hands on them, right? After they laid their hands on them, sent on their way, and listen, Luke wanted us to understand this, that they, they were sent on their way by what? By the Holy Spirit. 
It's all over the place. It, it saturates the book of Acts. Like nothing happens outside of the Spirit's power. So if that's the case in the Bible, then what's the case for our lives? Think about that. And they went down and sailed to, I call it South Carolina, it stops with the S, and sailed to Cyprus. All right, it's a little easier. And then they arrived at blah, blah, blah. They proclaimed the word of God to the Jewish synagogues. John was with them as their helper. It was by the Spirit. Verse 6, they traveled through the whole island and came to Pathos, where they met, listen to this now, a Jewish sorcerer. A Jew, a Jew, a Jewish sorcerer and false prophet named Bar-Jesus. Now, by the way, that name Bar-Jesus means son of Jesus. This, this Jewish sorcerer, kind of like, in a sense, like he was a traitor, right? He like, you know, he knew better as an as a Israelite, as a Jewish man. And he gave himself over to witchcraft and sorcery, and his name was Bar-Jesus. Now listen to this in verse 7. Who was an attendant of the proconsul Ser Sergius? So... A Jewish sorcerer was hanging out with the Roman governor. <laughs> and there was a reason that this Roman governor was hanging out with this Jewish sorcerer because there was some witchcraft spirit stuff going on and they were co combining their sources and power because whether you like this or not, Satan has power, but Jesus Christ reigns and rules. And so isn't it funny that this, we would call him a mayor, this, this Roman uh, governor or mayor. I would liken it to a mayor, since, uh, hence the translation here, that this mayor, now thinking about the political mess around, was hanging out with a sorcerer. I just want, we're not going to go into that, but just think about that a little bit. And it says the proconsul was an intelligent man. Sergius was an intelligent man. And he sent for Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. So in other words, he must have heard about the word of God. He must have heard about the name Jesus. He's got this sorcerer at his disposal who's practicing witchcraft and spells and magic arts. Now, I'm just going to say something. You know, we got the, this, in my opinion, this thing called Halloween coming up. We need to be very careful. That's all I'm going to say. There's lots of movies floating around there right now that are anti-Christ, devil worship, junk. Let me just say it that way. Be careful, be careful. And so he sent for Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. In other words, he had heard that the word of God in Jesus Christ could possibly be more powerful than his right-hand sorcerer, right? But Bar-Jesus, and it's a different name because Luke was so, listen to this, Luke was so offended at the name Bar-Jesus, means son of Jesus, that he didn't even want to recognize his name as he wrote this scripture. That's a true fact. So he uses a different name, right? And he says, but by Jesus, the sorcerer opposed them because that's what Satan does. He opposes us. He opposes our family. He opposes a mighty move of God. He puts uh, uh, mountains in front of us. He opposes God in general on every way, shape, and form. He opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from the faith. In other words, he tried to stop Paul and Barnabas by sharing with the Roman governor the word of God. He's like, you know, hey, no, don't listen to these guys. Like, I got the power. 
And that's what Satan will do with us. He uses trickery and all sorts of witchcraft spirits to try to get into our homes and get into our minds and tease us with all sorts of different antichrist tactics, right? Let me just tell you something. Don't ever open the door for Satan. Because when you do so, he's going to gladly come in. He's going to gladly come in. And so they were, this sorcerer was opposing them. He was standing up against them. He's an, an important, Sergius was an important uh, governor or mayor over a whole province. And he was an important man. And the sorcerer did not want this Roman, this Roman, which would have also been interesting. The Romans were uh, Pathions and they served all kinds of gods and goddesses. But there needed to be a breakthrough that happened. And then Saul, verse 9, who was called Paul, listen to this, filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, Luke reiterates this again because we know that there was prayer and fasting that happened. Listen, prayer and fasting happened before the breakthrough, before the toe-to-toe with Satan, as we're going to see right here. It happened before. So you want that breakthrough in your family, your life, whatever the case may be, it needs to be before. Filled with the Holy Spirit, he looked straight at Bar-Jesus, listen to this, and said to him, You are a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right. He looked at that demonic oppression, that demon that was standing right at him. And let me just tell you something. There's lots of demons that stand in front of us all the time in life. And Paul was sick of it, and he was saying, it's not going to be on my watch that this happens. And so he looked at the sorcerer filled literally with Satan. He said, you're a child of the devil. You're an enemy of everything that is right. And you are full of, listen to this, listen to these words. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Deceit and trickery. In other words, the counterfeit kingdom is always making something look fancy and pretty so that we will put our hands in the box, right? We will, we will play with it. Well, that's not so bad, you know, whatever the case may be. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Jesus calls Satan the father of lies. Jesus also calls Satan, he was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth. And Paul goes on to say, will you never stop perverting the the right ways of the Lord? Now here's where the kingdom of God come against the darkness of Satan, right here, right here. Here's where it happens. He says to that sorcerer, that witchcraft spirit that invaded his space, now the hand of the Lord is against you You are going to be blind, and for a time, you will be unable to see the light of the sun. Now, if you remember in the Gospels, Jesus said in Matthew 18, whatever you bind on earth will be what? Bound in heaven. There's a prime example of this. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound on heaven. In other words, Paul's like, you know what? I'm about the Lord's work. I'm filled with the Holy Holy Spirit. The church sent me out, and there ain't no demon, and there ain't no sorcerer going to get in my way in the name of Jesus Christ out with you. So what's going on here? Right? The kingdom of God against the kingdom of Satan. And guess what happens? The man goes blind. Go figure. Because nothing can stop. God. Nothing can stop Jesus. 
And the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. So start speaking it, start proclaiming it, and start saying it out loud to your mountains, to your demons, to everything that Satan is throwing at you. God is more powerful than all of that. And it says immediately, mist and darkness came over him, and he groped about. And he groped about. I find it also an interesting fact that Paul was also blinded by Jesus. Don't you find the interesting connection? He's like, well, hey, this happened to me. And now, like, I got the Holy Spirit in front of him. This sorcerer, be blind. <laughs> I mean, you got to laugh. At, I mean, you got to connect the dots there, right? Like, Paul, like, knew what, you know, he's a, he's a new a Christian, and he's walking in the power of the Spirit. I mean, like some stuff is going on in here. He's like, well, Jesus blinded me, and I'm going to blind him. And he did. And he did. Why? By Paul, how? By Paul's power? No, by the Spirit's power. But before that happened, what happened? Prayer and fasting. Praise and worship. Then came the breakthrough. And listen to what happened. Listen to the breakthrough. The sorcerer was stopped. He was blinded. He moped around. And as far as we can see, there was no repentance of right here of the sorcerer. Verse 12, when the proconsul saw what had happened, he believed. <laughs> he believed. This, this Roman, I mean, like putting, putting his life on the line as a governor of a province, if the word would have got back to, to Herod or whatever, like, listen, you're not going to believe this. Your, your man, Sergius, he just believed in Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And he, he saw the power of God come down. And you have to believe that that sorcerer couldn't perform anything that God just did. And he had his breakthrough. And God revealed himself to him, and he put his faith in Jesus Christ. It says he believed, for he was, listen, amazed. He was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. My friends, we can go toe to toe with the Spirit. Excuse me, toe to toe with Satan but it's only by the Spirit. We can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Satan, but it's only by his Spirit. I want you to stand with me in closing this morning. I'm gonna get some air flowing in here because I don't know about you, but I'm hot. I said in my Facebook post that I was gonna pray for families and people that needed breakthrough and we're gonna, we're gonna have that music play. And I understand if you need to leave, you can go, but if you, if you need breakthrough, if you wanna intercede from your family and your family's not even here this morning, we're just gonna open up the altar. We're gonna pray that the Holy Spirit comes down and gives you the breakthrough and gives you the revival, the renewal of whatever you need right now that's in your life. Strongholds to be broken. And so we're just gonna invite the Holy Spirit while the music plays. Jesus, would you just come down and meet us where we're at in the road of life? Lord, we just invite families, people, individuals, Lord. We pray for those that are even watching on the internet, Lord, right now. They need a breakthrough in their lives, in their mind. They need an atmospheric change, like something needs to change. And so, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray for people that are listening on the internet right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, right now, I come against stronghold by the powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
And we come against any form of demonic oppression, depression, Lord, strongholds, that they would hear the voice of God. And they would have a breakthrough in mind, body, and soul. Lord, we pray against the spirit of depression right now, Lord, over the airwaves, Heavenly Father. We pray over the spirit of depression in Jesus' name that it would be broken. We pray over the spirit of anxiety that it would be broken. We're praying over families that need, Lord, they need a reunion. They want that family reunion again, but pieces are severed and puzzle pieces are all over the place and they don't know how that's gonna happen. Lord, we pray for those people right now, Jesus, that you would bring people and put them back together again. We pray for households in the mighty name of Jesus. That, Lord, we are people of God and, Lord, that we wouldn't hold one hand with the enemy and one hand with God. Because light and darkness do not mix. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, do your mighty work in families. And I invite you this morning, come down to the altar. If the Lord is tugging on your heart, there is no judgmental spirit here. There's no condemnation. We all need Christ. We all need breakthrough. Come to the altar if you want to be prayed over. And so, Jesus, do your work in hearts and in minds. Lord, bring us into repentance where repentance needs to be made. We're just saying, Lord Jesus, we love you this morning. It's by your power, it's by your might, it's by your scripture, Lord, that we stand. You are the rock, Lord Jesus. As your scripture says, on your firm foundation we stand and we agree in prayer this morning. And so we're going to dismiss now. If you need to go, you can go. But I just ask that you would be respectful for those that are praying and those that are still going to come down. And so be blessed in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. May you be blessed in your coming, your going, your rising up, and your lying down now and forevermore. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This altar is open.